All right, so today we're gonna adjust this table. We're gonna bring it down a tone. We're gonna bring it down a little bit here, right? And as you can see, we're gonna be talking about amps and DACs. And do you need one for gaming? Where this is strictly focused on gaming. We're not gonna go no audio file route or anything. We're not gonna talk a bunch of numbers. I'm gonna talk about my use using them while again, I'm gaming. Again, we're not gonna dive in all those specs or anything. We're gonna talk about What's the difference? What do you need? What differences are you gonna tell? We'll take a close look that way. So sit back and get yourself cozy. And if you're not cozy, you can check out the sponsor of today's video, Victorage and their gaming chairs. Victorage Gaming Chairs has a wide array of gaming chairs to choose from, starting from the price bracket of 99 and going on up, depending on the features, functions, and style design that you want. So many different ones to choose from. We are sitting in a VE series here, and let me tell you what, stinking cozy. Adjustable arms right here, in and out, swivel and everything, tilt back, you got reclined back, and again, it is super soft and plush, and the build is solid, metal base, metal arms, Again, you feel the quality of the product here. And again, the cool thing is, there's so many different ones to choose from. Again, starting down at that low price range of 100 bucks, going up and you get to decide what you want as far as those features and functions. Make sure you go check out Victorage, links right down in the description. All right, so again, don't take this as like a review of unit right here. I've reviewed plenty of iFi amps before and then also uh, creative amps and we've talked about them, but this, it's kind of like a talking point review, if that makes sense, a user review, kind of, it's, it's pretty much how I go about all of my videos, right? And that's what we're gonna break it down. So, so number one, let's start right here. A gaming headset, right? You get your gaming headset, SteelSeries Arctic 5s or 3s here, whatever you know. You plug it into your controller or your PC and they sound decent. They get the job done, right? You got your bass, you got your mids, you got your highs. It's kind of doing what it needs to do. Give or take the situation or the game you're playing, right? Could it be a little muddy, a little bit jumbled and a little bit staticky? Yeah, pending what headset you get. A lot of gaming headsets have come a long way these days. They really have. So let's go this route. You buy your headset, you hear people talking about amps and DACs, and you look at the SteelSeries Arctic Pros, and they come with their own amp. You look at the Astros, they have their own amp. You're like, man, do I need that? So you take your Arctic 3s, you plug them into, let's say, the Creative Sound Blaster GC7 right here. This is like a gaming amp. Lots of cool features on this guy. As you can see with the multiple different buttons right here where you can program to what you want. You have your mic controls, your volume, you can control bass and treble, and you get all sorts of different features and functions on this. More or less made for gaming, which I really like. Again, having those features and functions on it. If you're playing a story game, bam, fire up more bass. Playing a competitive game, bam, tweak it out to more treble right there. And then again, you have mic controls and all that. So as far as functionality, it has it all. But the main question is, do you need it for your gaming headset? My vote is no. Because again, there's only so much capability within the gaming headset, the drivers and everything they have right there to really take advantage of an amp or DAC or any options you have even down to here. Will it boost your sound? Yes. Will it make it sound that much better? Mild, very mild with a gaming headset. But yes, it's gonna boost up the sound. It's gonna give it more punch. It's gonna just give it more, again, a livelier sound, but is it gonna be a more clear or more crisper or natural sound? No, it's not really gonna do that. Where you're gonna take that route is say you get into something like, we're gonna get to my main here, the LCDs, right? But say you're talking Bayer Dynamics. We know a lot of you have these out there. These are really popular. Some of you get the 80 ohm version. We have the 250 ohm version here, right? So you have that 80 ohm version where you really don't need anything to power. You can plug it right into there and it's decent. It sounds good. You're getting a little more clarity compared to like a gaming headset, you know, but you're really not getting everything out of that set of headphones being Bayer Dynamic. So we talked about the gaming type of DAC right here, right? So you take your Bayer Dynamics, plug it in here. You can really tweak it and dial what you want, which I love the GC7 with the Bayer Dynamics because the Bayer Dynamics have so many highs. It's just so crispy, like too crispy. And I love crispy, you know what I mean? So it's nice to be able to dial in that bass and really pump it right there with something like that, the uh, Bayer Dynamics. Now, jumping ahead here a little bit, which we're gonna talk more about the LCD, talking like a thousand dollar headphone right here or gaming headset, right? 
but focusing on the bear dynamic, when we jump up into like these guys, I'm going to skip the uh, shit DAC here and go into the iFi. So we have an amp DAC stack right here, right? So as you can see, you can buy one or the other, go just the amp or just the DAC and run like that. Now, when you talk about like a dedicated DAC, it's going to push your headphones a little bit because most of them have a little amp within them, but not near as much as an amp. Okay, so this is where I think a lot of us, at least myself, would get confused a lot looking at these, right? So we talked to gaming ones. You have a one and done device. Take it, bam, plug it in, plug your headphone in, and you're good to go. You're good to go. When you get into some more of this higher end stuff, again, talking iFi stuff, you got the DAC, and you got amp DAC, then you got just amp. It's like, what do I need? So this is what I want to break down for you guys, right? So we talked about the gaming one. We'll get back to this guy over here. Talk about the iFi with the DAC. You're going to hear everybody say, oh, it's a digital to analog converter. Oh, it's a digital to analog converter. If I got to hear digital to analog converter one more stinking time, I'm going to lose my dang mind here. You know what I mean? So what is it going to do? This is what I want to break down for you, right? Let's put this simple. No numbers, no nothing like that. An amp is going to take your headphone and make it sound that much more powerful. Okay? A lot of you guys know the ohms. The higher the ohms, the more you're going to need something to power these guys, pretty much any of these devices we have right here are going to push any of these headphones, 250 ohms or whatever, right? But even with the lower, I forget the ohms on the LCDs, but I know it's a lot lower. Is it like 90 or I don't know. It's much lower on these guys, right? But yeah, you can still get one of these amps that's going to push those and really just pull out the sound a lot more. The bass, the highs, everything. Like an amp, like no joke, guys. You go from, you, you might be able to think about like your car. You got your friend with that subwoofer in the trunk. They put that amp on, that subwoofer is going to go to town. If that amp wasn't plugged into that subwoofer, that subwoofer is not going to do anything. That's probably the easiest way to put it right there. Same thing with your gaming headsets or an amp. Now DAC, that's where it gets confusing, right? That digital to analog stinking converter. To put this the easy way, and even with my testing, using this for an extensive period of time, also testing the iFi as an amp and DAC separately, going just amp. When I routed it into the DAC, the dedicated DAC right here, the amp is pushing it. It cleaned it up, right? It really cleaned it up. It was just butter smoothed after that. The detail, like you still had the punch from your amp, but it was just so clear. Like everything was really, you truly, truly pronounced those highs, the mids, and the bass. The bass was so clean, like it would hit and that's what you heard. You know what I mean? Rather than just everything being punched and thrown into your face, right? You with me? You got the DAC and it was just like such a hard hitting bass because we're still getting that power from the amp, but such clean bass coming through that DAC, right? Because you're routing both of them through right there. It was just like, like I can sit here and talk about it. You can watch all these audio file reviews, but no joke, it shocked me, right? Cause I'm testing just amp. Then I route to DAC and come out there. It's just like, wow, what was I missing? The best way to explain it, amp and DAC right there going separate devices is like going from 60 Hertz up to say 144, 240, right? It is that much of a difference. It's that crisp. Now, this is where you can get even more lost. When you go into the amp DAC combos, these high-end ones, you're talking an $800 device right here, a stinking tank, a gorgeous device, right? Plenty of different connections, right? This guy also has Bluetooth and everything, incredibly solid, right along with all iFi products. I've reviewed them before. You all see me use them a lot. They're crisp, they're solid, they're stinking metal. I love them, right? But talking about this, 800 bucks, amp DAC combo right here. You can go look at the numbers if you want. We're not going to talk about that. Do you need to go, say, instead of something like this, which is about a $300 combo, up to something like that, that's $800 for gaming, right? Now, you got Bluetooth with this guy, but you cannot run Bluetooth with your game at the same time. You can't have both running. That's a stinker right there. Now, if it had Bluetooth and you can use the Bluetooth while your game's going through it, that'd be a selling point to me. But you can't do that over here. So... Again, is it beneficial? When I would use this compared to this, it was so clean. You heard me talk about how clean this was. 
this was on another level of clean, right? The audio. Now it wasn't pushing as much as this coming, coming out of that dedicated amp right there and routing through. I felt like I had a whole lot more in this, like clear as day, a whole lot more punch going through this, running each device at its own. This guy, definitely much more clean. Not saying this is bad, so you gotta stick with me, right? How I would explain this jump, again, hopefully you guys can follow me here, is 144 hertz to 240 hertz, right? Mild but noticeable, you know what I mean? It's that difference. It's like uh, maybe Xbox X to Xbox Series X, something like that, One X, you know? Um, maybe not even that drastic, but again, the Hertz one is, that's kind of, I want to put it into some language that hopefully we all can understand right here. So backtracking down to this little guy, the full, uh, uh, the shit full, <laughs> just saying the name of this company, right? The full of four, right? It's a plug and play uh, combo right here and you're going to get punch out of it. But again, it's more or less a dumbed down version of say this, right? It's the punch without the features, which you get with that. But again, you're talking only a hundred bucks. You know what I mean? And you all seen me cover before the amps or, or the little DAC combo deals that you can just plug in a USB, kind of like the ones you get with your headset sometimes, like the, uh, the uh, HyperX headsets, same type of deal, you know? But that's what you're gonna get right here, that plug and play extra punch. You can't even put these two in this class. It's a world of difference. It really is. Huge difference. Not saying these are bad. I stink and love them. And I've used them extensively. The, uh, the uh, GC7 here used to be my main on my desk for, shoot, almost five months, six months. And I loved it. I really did. But when I came over to this and started using this, it's like it just opened up a whole new world. Like It sounds so corny. And it's hard to even talk about it because you really got to experience it. In this, so far, this stack, which is about 150, 150 right here, I recommend this high and low, guys. This is staying on my desk. It's that stinking amazing. Now, you don't have any mic ports for this, so using most of us are using a standalone mic anyways, running USB into our PC, so you're going to be fine. Rather than something like this dedicated with gaming, you'll have those mic ports. Now, again, on these guys, you do have like bass boost and stuff like that, but... I can't stress it enough. If you're looking to up your audio, this combo, the iFi Zen, is just stinking amazing. But again, I wanna back up to the beginning of the video, what we're talking about. If you're just trying to get more out of your gaming headset, like your SteelSeries, your Corsair, your Razer, I think you might be wasting money diving into something like, definitely wasting money if you go this route. If you just wanna get a little more punch out of them, yeah, you can go with something like this you know, and upgrade your headphones or, or headset later on down the road. But as far as a gaming headset, you know, I, I think it should stay there. Now, if you're dabbling to Bayer Dynamics or stay with these uh, LCDs right here, these Audi-Z's, plugging them into these, the Bayer Dynamics or the Audi-Z over here, it's a world you're missing. It's that good, and I recommend it that much. We're also focused on the smoothest keyboard switch, highest refresh rate, the best graphics card. I think a lot of us forget to invest into that quality sound. You, you catch my drift. I love gaming headsets. I use gaming headsets as my main quite a bit out there, right? But when I wanna get serious, right? I go to the iFi with my Audi Easy's. Um, I hope I answered some questions here. You know, it's, again, I didn't want this to be a review or some spec field, just confusing bit. I just wanted to be simple and let you know from my user experience, what do I notice using these? And hopefully, you know, as a primary gamer, I could answer your question. You, you know, like me, I'd sit there and be like, man, do I need an amp? Do I need a DAC? Well, which one? Because there's so many different price ranges. Do I need a gaming one? Do I need this combo? Yada, yada, yada. The numbers mean nothing to me. I want to hear about that user experience. And I can't stress it enough, guys. Wow. It's that good. Let me know what you use down in the comments, what you're thinking about picking up and what you think about them as well. But all in all, I hope this jumble of a video helped you out some way or another, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit that thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for some future tech videos. Hey, I hope to catch you in the next one. Bye now.